Hey guys, welcome to this Unity tutorial, and in this one I'm going to show you how to use XML to make an item database, and at least you can use to make predetermined items and write their names and everything so that you're not hard coding it, and you can just load them from anywhere, whenever. So the first thing I want to do is make a new project, I'm going to call it item database, and I'm going to create project, and so this will pop up, and the first thing we want to do is create a new folder, and we're going to call it resources because if you use the load function in the resources class you can load just about anything from here uh, in script including text assets, prefabs, and whatever. So now we're gonna create a C-sharp script and this is going to be an item class. So I'll open this up. Wait for Visual Studio to open. Alright, so we're here and here we just need um, three things. So we're just going to have public float damage, for example, and we'll have a durability, and of course we'll have a name. Okay, and so it's going to be, we're going to have to be using system.xml.serialization and just also using system.xml and so here we're going to write an xml attribute and then in, in uh, parentheses we're going to write name because we're going to call it that in the xml we'll come we'll do that in just a bit so, and this is going to be an XML element, and it's going to be just called damage. And we're going to do the same with the durability. Or of course, right, durability in here. Okay. So now what I want to do is, actually I'm going to make these capital first. Sorry about that. And then now we want to just make the XML. So we'll go, we'll open this in the Explorer and pull it over here. So in here we're just going to create a new um, text document. We're going to call it items.xml. We hit yes and then we're going to open it and it'll pop up in Visual Studio for me. That's what I have on default. Excuse me. Okay, um, so the first thing we need is this little bit at the top. It'll tell it uh, a type of text to use and uh, the version to use of XML. So the first thing we need is an items is an item collection. And in here we're gonna have a list of items. And then in the list of items there will be item objects. Oops. Item objects. Okay. So for each item we're gonna have these two tags. So every item has a name, oh I forgot, so the name is going to be in here since it's an attribute. So the name will be, this one will just do sword, and then we're going to make damage, so damage here will be 50, and then over here we'll do um, durability, which will be 100, and now we'll just make a couple more items. And so this one, we'll, we'll call this one an axe. This damage will be 60. Durability will be like 90. And then over here we'll do a hammer. This damage will be 150. And durability will be like 70. Okay. So now what, you, now what we want to do is we're going to make a an item container class which is going to store, it's going to have a list of items so we can store all the items in it. So we're going to create a new C-sharp script, we'll call it item container. I'll open that up. Oh, and I, for, I believe I might have forgotten over here to get rid of the model behavior since we're not going to be attaching it to any script. This is just to make item objects. And so um, in the item container, we are also not going to use the um, 
happy if you're here. And the first thing we need to do is right. Oh, of course, we need to include the XMLs. We need all of these includes. Okay. And so we're gonna write XML roots, and then in parentheses, item collection, because that's what we had is the collection around our item arrays. And so here we're gonna make a public list of items, and then we're gonna call items equals new list item. And is that all? And so now this will need two tags. It'll need to be It'll need XML array, and it'll be called our array, which was items in the XML file. And it needs XML array item, and so these are gonna. This is gonna be whatever was in the array, which was called item for us. And so now uh, we don't need either of these functions, and we're going to now create a load function so that we can load all the items from the XML into an item container and it's going to be stored in this list right here and then we can access it later so what we're going to do is make a new function and return oops, an item container and it'll be called load and it'll load from a hat So the first thing we need to do is since we're loading from a um, since we're loading from a from the resources folder, we're going to need to create an, a text asset, and we'll just call this XML because it's going to be the XML file. And we're going to do resources dot load text asset from the path that we pass to the arguments. And then we're, we need to create an XML serializer. Called serializer equals new XML serializer type of item container. Okay. And then we need a string reader. We can read the text out of the XML. Deserialize reader. This will deserialize the text as an item container. And then that will store into the items list. And so now all we need to do is close the reader and then return oops, items. Okay. So now all we need to do is. Oops, so now what we need to do is go over here, and what I like to do is create a sort of loader so that we can access the item container function from here. And we're going to keep the start function, get rid of this update, and then we're going to uh, create a string here as the path. And I'm going to make it constant because I'm not going to be changing it at all. So we'll make public constraint um, path, and it will equal just items because we're this is in the resources folder because when we wrote back in the loading function, that's what we wrote. We did resources that load. So here we'll just do item container dot load path, and of course we need to store these in an item container. And now we'll be able to write for each item item in IC the items print item dot name. Okay, and so this should work from now. So if we hit play, and we'll, oh, oops, <laughs> I forgot. Um, we were supposed to add it on to an empty game object. We'll call this loader, and we'll attach the item loader to it. Now we'll hit play, 
and we can see it's printed all of our items out. And so we can use this later on for putting the items in a UI, having like a crafting interface on the side or something where it shows all your craftable items, or just use them for generating maps, and the maps will have like random items stored somewhere in chests, for example. So anyway, that's the end of this tutorial. Thanks for watching, guys. If you liked it, make sure to leave a like and hit subscribe for more content like this. Thanks for watching.